Welcome. It's time for our very first hot topic. I want to take a look at the visa ban on certain Nigerians by the U.S. Uh, on over electoral uh, offenses. And we've been joined by Mr. Nick Agole, who is a, a public affairs analyst, to take a look at this. He's based in the U.K. Uh, Mr. Nick, good to have you with us. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to our viewers. Good morning to you. So, first of all, uh, this is not the first time the U.S. is doing this. Um, however, again, names are not listed, and that's one thing that Nigerians are calling for uh, as this is being done. Let's have your take on this scenario that's playing out. And, and, and thank you very much for the question. Uh, I have a few things to say about this. Uh, the first one is that it is right for the U.S. to take these uh, actions to support our democracy, to help deepen our democracy. Because at the end of the day, it is beneficial to Nigerians, but it is also beneficial to the U.S. itself. Because first of all, we just had this recent incident of an attack on a convoy of the U.S. consulate in Nigeria, at which uh, lives were lost. Uh, they lost the lives of their staff, and the lives of our security men were also lost. And each of these lives that were lost is a real life, a life with families, with loved ones, those people depending on them and all of that. Okay. If we had a functional government in Nigeria, a government that obeys the constitution, that says the primary aim why people are in office is to provide security and welfare to all Nigerians and people who are in Nigeria. If we had a functional government, those people whose lives have been brutally taken will still be alive today because the government would have provided security in Anambra and in all other states and the FCT in Nigeria such that such a broad daylight attack cannot happen. You know? And even if it happens, as it happens elsewhere, the government security architecture would have by now rounded up those who are responsible and giving them a clear choice whether they want to surrender to law enforcement or they want to be fixed an appointment with God. So that is one of the advantages that the U.S. itself stands to benefit if they help to deepen our democracy. Because U.S. businesses are also operating in Nigeria. And if we have a functional government, the businesses will thrive better than they are now. Or there are even businesses in the U.S. that would like to come to Nigeria that are currently being discouraged from coming to Nigeria. And if the U.S. helps us to deepen our democracy, it is also to their own advantage. So, so it, is, it is good that they have taken these steps. And I think that... Uh, this visa ban is not enough. It has actually not gone enough because you ask yourself the question, uh, if we refuse the people a visa going to the U.S., and so what? Mm -hmm. They probably have the Dubais or some of these other uh, tax havens or nations where criminals could be allowed to come in. That's exactly and, uh, the sentiment shared by a guest we just had a while ago, Mr. Zikenya, took uh, that the visa ban is not enough. It's not harsh enough. Uh, what, what, what would you suggest that should have been done? Okay, so in addition to visa ban, so what we are saying is that visa ban should not be taken off the table. Of course, these people should be banned. At least it, 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 it kind of uh, destroys their ego, the fact that they are not able to go to the U.S. At least their ego is, uh, is bruised, which is good. 
because they could be invited to a conference, invited to anything in the U.S. They may have assets and all that in the U.S. They can't go there. So that is, is, is okay. So the visa should be there, but it's not enough. Additionally, the U.S. possess the capacity and capability to be able to trace illegal stolen monies from Nigeria. They have that capacity and capability. So they should follow through by tracing all the ill-gotten wealth, the monies that these people have stolen from Nigeria, trace it and seize it. And seize it. And when they seize it, they need to understand whether the government that is in Nigeria is actually a functional government or not. Because we have seen cases where these monies have been seized and have been sent back to governments in Nigeria who ended up also stealing the money. So if the government is functional, is accountable to the people, they can return the money to the government. But if such a government is not accountable, then the U.S. can as well engage international and local agencies to execute projects for Nigerians with the money directly. Go and sink a, 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 a water project, electricity project, construct roads, build schools, do clinics, around communities in Nigeria that don't see these things. That would be my, my, my proposal. And that is that is number one. Number two, the, the U.S. government should liaise with other countries in the world so that there is a total visa ban on these people hmm. all over the world, not just in the U.S. And if these people are found in any of these nations, they are arrested and tried. You know, hmm. tried. That they, they need to do much more than this ordinary visa ban because the U.S. have the capacity. If the U.S. wants to, to, to get the EU on board with them, they can do it. And then there will not be an EU ban, visa ban, and then these people will be placed on wanted list so that they are only holed up in Nigeria and they'll be forced to spend that money in Nigeria because right now they take the money they, they, they take it out of Nigeria and then they, they, they go to where they have kept the money and they'll be enjoying the money after they have scattered Nigeria. They scatter Nigeria and they find themselves and their families to some foreign land where they are not enjoying their lives. They should be forced to remain in the Nigeria that they have scattered so that all of us are in that Nigeria. And maybe perhaps that can bring them to a point where they say, look, since we don't have anywhere to go, let us now solve Nigeria so that Nigeria is also good for all of us to enjoy. Now, do you see this uh, encouraging the UK to also come out openly? Because in April, in April, uh, you, the UK also did mention that uh, about five to ten Nigerians were on their watch list with regards to electoral offences. Do you see this propelling them to come out now <clears throat> and also place their own ban? They should, they should come in like yesterday. The U.S. <coughs> government should come in like yesterday with their ban. The EU as a bloc should come in like yesterday. Yes, these people should be, should, they should be made paria. They should be made unwanted. We, we should go to, to even Asia. The, 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 the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, should ban them. The likes of Australia, New Zealand, everywhere, Canada should ban these people. Because what these people are doing is not right. We have a country that should be one of the most beautiful countries in the whole world. That is being damaged by people who have no interest to deliver good governance. Their own is that we are using the office to come and steal, loot, and then snatch the money somewhere. Whereas every single person who is coming to ask for our vote should have a singular intention. I want to serve my people. I want to make their lives better. I want to develop Nigeria. I want to contribute my own quota to develop Nigeria. I want Nigeria to be beautiful for all of us. But they have turned themselves into locusts. And when we come out to vote for competent leadership, they thwart the process. They bring the military, the police, 
you know, to scare us. And then even the, 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 the votes, the little votes that we end up putting in the ballot box, they, 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 they now steal it again. They, they perpetrate uh, uh, electoral uh, corruption on all of that. So where are we going to run to? What are we going to do? You know, so we, we actually need the, the, the help of the international community, all of the international community, to come and fish out these people who are destroying our democracy and deal with them. Uh, announcement was made by the UK uh, uh, consulate here in Nigeria. Uh, F uh, Femi Fani Kaade, uh, who was specifically mentioned uh, in the course of that discussion, um, did respond. And even now that the US placed uh, their own visa ban, he has also responded that uh, they wouldn't lose sleep over this. How do you respond to the fact that He's making all these responses, especially uh, as his name is not mentioned in the U.S. Uh, visa ban yet. At least well, his name has not uh, been mentioned. The, 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 that is the other thing. Uh, I, 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 would, I would have wished the U.S. actually names these individuals so that we will, we will, know, we will know them. We will know those who are on this visa ban, because that will also shame them. You know, it will shame them. So, uh, somebody like Femi uh, Fanny Kayode, you see, Nigeria is uh, a, 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 an interesting place. If Nigeria was an, not an interesting place, uh, somebody like Fanny Kayode should not be given any space to come out and rant and, and make noise and and you know, and, and be speaking because that man, his pedigree over time, he has lost all credibility. It is it, it, it such a person should not even be given uh, air time to to speak. In, in the UK here, where I'm sitting, he, he has issues here. I don't even think he can come here in the UK. You know, so so people like that. If we're a responsible nation, nobody should even regard what they say. Nobody. Because over time, today he's, he's singing on behalf of the APC. Yesterday, he was singing on behalf of the PDP. Tomorrow, who knows? He might not be singing back on behalf of the PDP. This is, this is somebody who switches allegiance like a chameleon. I, I'm not... I'm not abusing him or saying anything against him. I am talking about his pedigree. What he has done over time in this country we call Nigeria. So perhaps his name is on the list. And that is why he's coming out and saying he will not lose any sleep. But I know he will lose some sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, the U.S. Uh, Secretary of State has spoken with our uh, president-elect and um you know, uh, they have so they made some very strong uh, discussions there. They had uh, the importance of inclusive leadership uh, that represents all Nigeria uh, was one of the things that he talked about. Um, before you respond to what you think about this conversation that took place between uh, the Secretary of State, the U.S. Secretary of State, and the President-elect, I also respond to the fact that uh, Atiku Abubakar and the Labour Party have described that phone call as quite demoralizing. Yes, I have, uh, I have read the, the statement. Uh, I, I read the statement of Atiku Abaka on Twitter, uh, what he said. I, I haven't read that of uh, the Labour candidate, Peter Obi, but uh, they, they, they can say what they want to say from their own perspective. But I also understand it from the perspective of the U.S. to say that uh, there was an election and the result of the election is being disputed. And that the result of the election is being disputed doesn't mean governments will have to come to a stop. Uh, I mean, a similar thing happened in the U.S. A similar thing. Uh, uh, Blinken's uh, government, I mean, the government that Blinken serves, um, uh, they, 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 they won an election and there were disputes uh, led prominently by the then outgoing president, uh, Donald Trump. And he said that Joe Biden uh, did not win the election. 
And this thing went to court. It went to court all the way to the Supreme Court in the U.S. And uh, 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 Donald Trump, Donald Trump uh, is now being accused of instigating a riot at the Capitol to stop the declaration of his opponent, Joe Biden, as the president. You know, and that is now uh, undergoing criminal proceedings in the U.S. So it will be difficult on the side of the U.S. to now come to Nigeria and say that they are not going to recognize. Uh, as, uh, sorry, I need, I need I need power into my phone uh, computer. So uh, that they are not going to recognize uh, uh, the the election that held in Nigeria. Uh, why the matters are in court? No, we will have to allow the judicial process to play out just like uh, it played out in the US uh, and it is the court that will now decide who actually was the winner of the election in uh, in 20 this past election that we had in Nigeria is the court that will decide 2023 uh, I can understand why um, uh, the candidate, candidate uh, Atiku Abubakar and candidate Peter Obi in the last presidential elections are not happy that the U.S. Uh, Foreign Secretary uh, had a phone conversation with uh, the declared winner of the election. Uh, but I also understand from the perspective of the U.S. is that uh, just like it happened in their own case, I was trying to narrate how it happened in their own case. In their own case, in the last presidential election, there was an election and the result was being disputed, led by the candidate who was then the incumbent uh, president, Donald Trump, who lost. And the matters were in court all the way to the Supreme Court of the U.S. And uh, Donald Trump decided to, to as, his, as he is being accused now, to take laws into his hand and instigate a riot at the Capitol to stop the declaration of the result. And that is what the U.S. will not also want to happen in Nigeria. They, they wouldn't want to support a situation where um, the, 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 the results are stopped or the declaration of results uh, is stopped or even the swearing in of a candidate that has been declared is stopped until the courts of law adjudicate on the matter. So since the matters are in court, I believe the, the U.S. government, they are, they are in a hard position because, uh, of course, they are aware that there were ele electoral malpractices, but they are not the ones who will come and adjudicate or make pronouncements on them. They will have to leave that to the court. And so they are going to work with whoever is, going, is, is sitting on the seat of the president of Nigeria. And as of today, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is the one who has been declared a winner and if the courts don't take any contrary decision on the 29th of uh, May, he will be sworn in. And when he's sworn in, the judicial process will continue. And if the courts decide, after they have heard all parties, that uh, uh, Tinubu is not the, the validly declared president-elect, and somebody else is installed, or another election is called, the U.S. government will still have to go with that. So um, as much as uh, Tinubu and, uh, I mean, Atiku and uh, Peter Obi, don't like what happened, uh, the U.S. government will just have to deal with whoever is uh, sitting in the office of President of Nigeria. Just before we wrap up, what do you make of the fact that the U.S. is calling for justice for uh, members of their consulate that uh, were slain in Nigeria uh, on Tuesday? Yes, they are very correct to, to call for, for justice. And uh, <clears throat> it is, it, like I said in my opening remarks, uh, these are situations where you can clearly see that when a country like Nigeria, where Africa's most populous country, the most populous black nation in the world, uh, is not having a functional government, it impacts on everybody. Uh, I, I, you know, if it was in the UK or in the US that this government attacked this convoy, as I'm speaking to you today, there will be helicopters in the air, there will be police on the ground, there will be sharpshooters. There will be all sorts of... They will be looking for these people until they find them. You know, so 
in Nigeria, you now discover that, okay, this thing happened in Anambra. Mm -hmm. Those people that perpetrated this crime are still there in Anambra. And uh, uh, the, the presidency, has, as usual, has issued a statement. Commissioner of Police will issue a statement. You are not seeing anybody that is going after these people. Well, U.S. has and also issued... The White House has made it clear that no American was involved. Uh, do you think if an American was involved that things would have been different? Yes, of course. Um, if a U.S. citizen was involved, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will not be surprised if the U.S. will send the Marines to take out those who... Who, who, who perpetrated this uh, incident. But uh, uh, the fact that they were consular staff of the U.S., even if they are Nigerians, their employer is the U.S. government. And I expect the U.S. to still stand up for these people who are working for them. You know, it was their business that these people went to Anambra to go and conduct. And if they now happen to suffer this kind of uh, a brutal murder, then the U.S. has to do much more. Uh, of course, they, they can give Nigeria or offer Nigeria support in terms of what we need to do, uh, but the perpetrators have to be found. And in Nigeria so far, especially in the last eight years, we have seen this kind of uh, murders, you know, uh, and, and nothing seems... It, it's as if there are governments within governments in Nigeria. There are people who... I mean, you, you see in Nigeria where... Um, Bandits can seize Nigerians and hold them hostage in Nigeria, on Nigerian soil. And the security are unable to do anything about it. So uh, the U.S. government should not just say uh, the, 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 the people should be brought to justice. They need to also offer Nigeria They need to uh, do more. You mean to, they need to, be, to, do, to do more. They probably need to yes. do what they should have done or would have done if a U.S. citizen was among those who were killed on Tuesday. Thank you so much, Mr. Nick Agole, for your time and insight this morning. Uh, thank you, and, and, and a very beautiful, uh, nice day to our viewers. Mr. Nick Agule, public affairs analyst, joined us from the U.K. to take a look at the visa ban on some electoral offenders uh, by the U.K. Uh, on Monday. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break and come back to look at our second hot topic. Stay with us.